Good morning and welcome once again to the 69th of our 365 Bible studies. My name is Alan Mayer. I'm a retired priest living in Horsham. And <clears throat> we're going to be looking at different aspects of Bible and the kind of literature that we find in it. At the moment, we're looking at the ancient sagas in the Old Testament, and in particular at that period between Abraham and the Exodus. And at the moment, we've reached that time in Moses's life when he has moved away from Egypt and has um, married his wife and he's helping with his father-in-law's flocks. And he is given his vocation and God is named. We have arrived at the burning bush and this is Exodus chapter 3 verses 7 to 15. At the burning bush Yahweh was speaking to Moses. I have noticed how cruelly my people are being treated in Egypt. I have heard them crying out to be rescued from their slave drivers. I know about all that they are suffering and that is why I have come down here. I've come to rescue them from the Egyptians. I've come to bring them out of Egypt, to bring them to a wide open land, rich and fertile. Right now, that land is occupied by Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. Yes, I have heard my people's cry. I can see how the Egyptians are oppressing them. And now I am sending you to the Egyptian king so that you can lead my people out of his land. Moses was doubtful. I'm not anything special. How can I go to the king and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God answered, I'll be right there with you. And when you bring the people out of Egypt, you will worship me here on this mountain to prove that it was I who sent you. Moses replied, When I go to the Israelites and tell them that the God of their ancestors sent me to them, they are going to ask me what your name is. What am I going to tell them? God said, I am who I am. Tell it to them like this. The one who is called I Am, which sounds like Yahweh in Hebrew, the one who is called I Am has sent me to you. So tell the Israelites that I, Yahweh, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, have sent you to them. This will be my name forever and all future generations must call me by it. God revealed his nature and his name to Moses at the bush on the mountainside that burnt but was not consumed. The story insists that this is not a new God. It is the same God who came to the assistance of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob who is now answering the prayers of the enslaved and oppressed Hebrews in Egypt. This is, however, a fresh start, a renewed relationship between God and his people. God is the one who will rescue the people, and he is sending Moses to them to be his human mouthpiece. The difference this time is that it is not an individual ancestor, but of a viable nation that is being rescued. So some scholars regard this saga as the real foundation myth of the descendants of Israel, to which other ancestral stories were subsequently added in hindsight. The depths that reside in the name of God would take a whole book to enumerate. All I can do today is point you to three basic meanings of Yahweh's name. First, it was far too soon for anyone to have a sophisticated metaphysical idea of God. This God was physically present in creation, known as 
Yahweh, meaning the existence, who is here seen in, cha in charge of creation, moving in the wind and flashing in the lightning storm. Then second, he is Yahweh, meaning being itself, the source and origin of everything that exists. And third, Yahweh is not just being, but becoming, not just a maker, but also a responsive and lively God. Why then did the Jews stop using God's name? They didn't always shy away from saying God's name out loud, and it is found everywhere in the Psalms. Your Bible will probably have the word Lord in capital letters whenever it occurs. In the end, and with the rise of seriously conservative religion between the Babylonian exile and the time of Christ, <clears throat> the commandment not to take the name of Yahweh in vain practically ended its use in normal speech, and it was replaced by euphemisms, the most familiar of which we find in the Greek Old Testament and the Christian New Testament, the word kurios, the Greek word for the boss or sir, or the proprietor, most frequently translated as Lord. For Christians, Jesus repaired this relationship when he taught us to call God Abba, which means Dad. But even then, our deference forces us to say Father. And tomorrow, tomorrow we see Moses fulfilling his mission as he leads God's people out of their slavery towards freedom. I'll see you then.